Hello guys, David Vos here. Well, it's um, pretty late. I had already finished a video about that possible tsunami, that volcano that's going off down there in uh, La Palma, that island. And I showed you guys the unusual patterns where there seems to be like a, a grid pattern of earthquake activity. Well, somebody had pointed out to me, there is more to this story. <laughs> oh, buddy, this is starting to look like a real story. Something that I'm really beginning to think might actually be something we need to really, really, really think about. So there's this game, and it's called Secret Files 2. It's like a little game cartoon thing. I'm going to show you a little clip of this thing. But you see, right on the the cover of this game, they show you what it's about. It's about a tsunami that hits New York City. You see the Statue of Liberty in New York City. And there comes that big wave coming into this, you know, coast. That's what it's about, but it's very odd because it takes pay place on that island that we were talking about earlier where we were discussing how there were concerns. There have been concerns for a while now. Scientists have gone in and they've looked at this and they're saying that it's just precarious and anything, an earthquake or something like that could just cause it to be falling off into the sea and it would cause a huge tsunami. They've, they've said that they're, they're really worried about this. It wouldn't take much for that thing to just fall off into the sea and it would be like this huge mountain the size of Manhattan. The size of like a small country. <laughs> a big, what the Bible calls the great mountain that fell into the sea. Look, if this is actually going to happen, it's revelations here, and we've already determined it is, and it's like one thing after the another, Jesus is talking about it, and he's saying, look, don't be deceived, Antichrist is coming, the first horse is white, looks like Jesus, he's got a bow, we looked that up, it's a, a toxin, it, it, it's the word toxin, or biological warfare, and that's what that bow represents, and so, then after the first white horse, which is the Antichrist, who's carrying the bow, which in Greek is toxin, because they used to dip the arrows in some poison. And then the next thing is, okay, the red horse and the, the pale horse and the black horse. And this is representing war, famine, and pestilence. And we know this because Jesus told us that these four things would come when the end of the age, he said, this is how you would know that it was the end of the age. Because the disciples asked him, when will be the end of the age or the end of the world? Some play, people translate. But, and the sign of thy coming or thy parousia. And he says, look out that nobody misleads you. Many will come in my name and will say, I am the Christ. And there shall be wars and famines and pestilence but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom there shall be food shortages and earthquakes in one place after the other earthquakes now i looked that word up in the greek and the word is seismo seismic activity we still use that word today it's talking about literally the greek word is just shaking it didn't really mean earthquake. It meant literally shaking the earth down to its foundations. And it doesn't have to necessarily mean an earthquake. But, you know, we read in the book of Isaiah that the earth shall be turned upside down and shaken out of its place. There is something being prophesied. And we know that it is Yahweh who intends to do these things. Now, we on this channel believe that we're under the new covenant that we're that we're waiting for the lord jesus christ 
who is our Lord and Savior. And he is going to save all those who can endure to the end, who, who believe upon his name. We are not appointed under the wrath. And he shall keep us from the hour of test. But it is prophesied that we will come to this place in history and it calls it the great day of judgment. And it says, Fear God, Theos, and give him glory for the hour of his judgment has come. And it tells us that we need to get out of her if you do not want to share with her in her sins. And it talks about her plagues. If you don't want to partake of her plagues. And it in, in, in Revelation 18.23, it goes further and explains that Babylon's greatest sin before she falls is that she deceived the entire inhabited world with her pharmaceutical drugs. And of course, this is where the plagues come in. We've talked about this. This goes all the way back to when Yahweh sent plagues upon the children of Egypt. And he told the Israelites, he says, if you will obey me, I will not put upon you the plagues that I put upon the Egyptians. So Yahweh admits that he is the one who's making these plagues. The plagues, if you'll remember, were flies and frogs and gnats and locusts and pestilence. And it seems to be repeating itself here. And so Yahweh, who parted the Red Sea, and yet did not do so by means of some kind of mental, you know, just by his word, like, like he's not the divine being because he says, I am the divine being and there is none else. Get down and worship me. I am the only savior. I recognize no other. I am God and there is none else because it tells us in other apocryphal scriptures that he was blind, that he was not from the pleroma, didn't have the ability to understand all things. And so he was below the light, never saw the light, and was born in the darkness. And when he awoke, he couldn't, he couldn't see the light, he didn't know the truth. And he thought he was God. So, when Yahweh brought miracles, he did so in a very peculiar way. It was recorded when he parted the Red Sea that there was a, it describes it as some kind of unidentified object flying around in the sky. It calls it at times a cloud. And it was also called a fire by night and a cloud by day. So it was lit up. Remember, Jesus also went up into the sky into a cloud and was the cloud received him. And it says, in like manner, he shall come again. This cloud is described in the Old Testament another time with a crystal dome and a throne. And it was Yahweh who sat on the throne and it was a pavement. Of, it, well, it talks about an emerald stone it looks like an emerald stone and there were these pavement work and there was this fire and flashes of light so we're not really sure how Yahweh performed his miracles but what we do know is that he tells us in his scriptures that he will once again Come to the world and in his wrath destroy everyone because we're all sinners. You see, that's why the New Testament says if you believe in Jesus, then you passed over from death life. And we're not under any condemnation, those who are in Christ. And we we are not under or appointed under the wrath because you see, Christ died on that cross and paid the price. And all you got to do is believe. But what does Yahweh have planned for us? We know that a lot of stuff that he plans on doing seems 
like it's almost a copy of what our Father in Heaven does. Jesus came literally to the earth and partook of flesh and blood, as did his brethren. But the Antichrist, it talks about him being a beast and they make an image. And it says that they give life unto the image of the beast so that it may speak. And it causes all, both rich and poor, the great and the small, the strong and the weak, to receive a mark that they may not be able to buy or sell. Now we know that this thing that's going around is they're able to track you, to mark you. There's computer, people are talking about, you can go on the computer and find out where you are. Anyone's got the thing, they can track you. And you can't buy or sell without it. And it's coming to a place where you won't even be able to travel. This seems like we are absolutely, certainly it comes from the pharmaceutical companies which is the word that it uses in, in Revelation 18.23. So, what's really going on? You see, Yahweh's not really the divine being. He's a deceiver, a liar. And Jesus told us this when he came to the world. He said, your father, talking to the Sanhedrin, the scribes and Pharisees, he says, your father is the devil. He is a liar. He is a murderer from the beginning. And the truth is not in him. And he says that you wish to do the desires of your father. But he says, now my father, Jesus said, is in heaven. Your father is beneath. And what he's talking about is the same thing that all the nations believe. They all have these gods, one of which uh, in the Greek, uh, mythology was called Hades and Hades had the keys to the bottomless pit or to Hades this is talked about in Revelation chapter 9 where it says that a, a mountain fell into the sea and after that the bottomless pit was opened and this being called Abaddon or Father Abbey Adon, Adonai that is the deity that we call that got started in Egypt, Aton, and in Hebrew it's Adon, and it was supposed to be the one God, the monotheistic God that took over Egypt for a period of time. And the Pharaoh that implemented that one, uh, the one deity, the monotheism, who was Aton, his name was Akin Aton, Akinaton. Many people say, that corresponds with the timetable of Moses. And so Moses taught the people this monotheism and this one deity. So, what we see then is that Yahweh isn't really the divine being. The Old Testament calls him the angel of Yahweh. He was just an angel. He was one of the children of of our Father in Heaven, who in the Old Testament is called the Most High, who came to Abraham and gave him bread and wine and sent his high priest, king priest, Melchizedek. And we know that Jesus was of the line of Melchizedek and he was a king priest. Well, Yahweh then is not really a divine being, but he's a liar and a deceiver. And so all of his miracles and the, all the things that he does is by uh, to, to rule over us is by keeping us in ignorance and keeping us under slavery. He created religion and deception. He's a liar and a slanderer. He accuses you day and night by means of his law. And so that's all a big scam. And so his power is really just a big scam. He's a lying. And we need to tell him to get thee behind me. But he can do a lot of damage, just like a human being can do damage. They can they get a weapon or whatever like this. They can build with technology things that can be very, very difficult. I mean, look what mankind has done. We've made nuclear weapons. We've got crazy weapons that could destroy the world. we got CERN now going on. We don't even know what it is. Well, if Yahweh's not the divine being and he's a liar, then everything he's going to do is going to mimic or try to do what our divine father in heaven can do 
but he's going to fall short. But for us, since we don't know any better, we believe when he does these crazy miracles, it's like with technology or whatever, you know, information or knowledge that Satan has and his demons that they can make machines that scare human beings, but they're not the same. He does not have all power. He's not omniscient. And so what could he do? Well, he could come down in a spaceship. Perhaps he's just an astronaut. The Sumerian tablets talk a lot about that, as though there were some individuals that came from other worlds. They were called Anunnaki. They even had relations with men. They were humans, but highly advanced humans. And so they have perhaps spaceships or some sort of technology. And they probably have bases. Maybe they have a base on the moon. This is why they don't show pictures of the moon. And perhaps, as we've said in other videos, they have bases or a base on Antarctica. And we've seen all the tunnels under the ocean and so forth and the ports all over the world. It looks as if Yahweh has prophesied that one day he will destroy mankind. Because you see, he wants us only to be a slave. And if we're not going to no longer be his slave, then he just doesn't want us at all. He wants us to to um, to, for, to perish. And so it is really, remember when Yahweh came and saw Adam and Eve and they partook of knowledge to become like God. He didn't like that. And he cursed the ground and he cursed Adam and he cursed Eve and he cursed the serpent. So, Perhaps, then, what was flying overhead that looked to be a fire by night and a light by day was, and other times they call it a cloud, which the word cloud just means a, a mass, some massive thing in the sky. The piers was some sort of unidentified flying object that had some great technological abilities because they were able to part the Red Sea. And they could drop manna down from heaven. This wasn't our father in heaven. He was a liar. And so, the prophecies of wrath are from Yahweh. Our father in heaven is light and there is no darkness in him. And he cannot tempt man with evil. Neither can he be tempted with evil. And he loves everybody. And he's not partial. And he lets the sun shine on the righteous as well as the so-called unrighteous. You see, our father in heaven doesn't hate people, he loves people. And he's all, he's not willing that any should perish. So this is not our Father in Heaven that's bringing down all this wrath upon mankind. So if Yahweh is going to bring a, about, a, a, a try to bring about a fulfillment of his prophecies, where he gathers all people around, he, he takes his chosen people and brings them to Israel, and that becomes a nation in 1948. And then he prophesizes that Within that generation, he would uh, bring all the nations round about and they would have a battle and he would defeat all the world and all the nations would perish and there would be no more Canaanite at all when it was all over. And many other nations will perish off the face of the earth. Only his chosen will survive and those who will bow and get on their knees and bow. It's interesting that the mark of the beast is on your hand or your forehead which, as we have said in Exodus and Deuteronomy, tells us that that is the Ten Commandments of Yahweh. They were written on their hand or their forehead. And you see, that is the mark which is opposed to the seal of the living deity that's upon our foreheads. And that seal is the promised Holy Spirit. It's the opposite of law. The Spirit, you see, is love. But the law is vengeance. So, we know beyond a doubt, the scriptures tell us that Yahweh is going to try and fulfill these prophecies and bring about the restoration of his people. But of course, Jesus has told us that he loves everybody. There's neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor freeman. The book of Revelation talks about a great multitude of every nation, every tribe, and every tongue, and every people that will be standing with white robes, immortality, They'll put on the robes of immortality and have eternal life. And this is our Father in Heaven's plan. Because 
in in the kingdom of our Father in heaven, there's neither Jew, there's neither Greek, as we've said, there's neither male nor female, there's no slavery. It's not going to be like Exodus 21, 7, where it says, when you sell your daughter as a slave, she'll never go out free, as do the other um, Hebrew slaves, who may, be, may have incurred a debt and have to work off that debt. But a woman can never pay off her debt, because she's just simply a slave for all of her life. And this is why she cannot go out. So we're here. We've already seen this whole thing that's been going around, you know, the thing. And everybody's getting the thing. And this has been going on for a year and a half or more. And, of course, the Bible was saying that when we're coming down to this time of the end, this is going to be one of the things. And then we're going to see earthquakes or great shakings. And the book of Revelation talks about a mountain falling in the sea. We've got all this going on. But Yahweh is trying to fulfill this. His, he's bringing his wrath. You see, well, the wrath, uh, we're not under the wrath because we're Christians. We don't have any condemnations because we believed in Jesus and his hand of protection is over all of his children. But those who don't believe in Jesus, according to the Apostle Paul, remain under the power of Yahweh, under that curse, the curse of the law and the punishment. So, I want to show you this game, okay, that's out. And it's literally called the De La Palma. And if you look at it, it actually shows that that, that island that we just got through watching that's got a big volcano on it right now is blaring and blasting out and, you know, lava spewing everywhere. And as you saw, there are earthquakes blowing off for days now in a grid, a straight line grid. It's a pattern that cannot be, does not appear to be, it, it could it be possible that it would be natural? It seems to be some sort of man-made or highly advanced technology that's doing this. We know that our government has harp and all kinds of things. So watch this little clip because it will blow your mind. Talk about predictive programming. You see, they have been telling us what they're going to do. And after watching this, I don't think there's any doubt that they are planning on a huge tsunami to hit the East Coast. Watch this. Okay, now, this is a clip from this game. You see that? That is the island where that volcano is going off. It's the exact island in the game that's in real life. And what's going on in real life was actually in the game. Now, look at this. All right, watch this really, really carefully. This is, <laughs> there's just no way that they could have made this coincidentally, this thing in, the, in this video game actually starts happening in real life. There's too many things um, similar. Watch as on this island, they begin to detonate. It doesn't, I don't know if it says how. I don't understand all that, that they're saying. But I gather from what they're saying in whatever language it is that they're detonating with some sort of bombs or whatever to make a tsunami. They're telling you that they're causing a tsunami by by precise detonations. And it even shows it in a kind of a grid, but it's like one straight line. And that's actually what's happening. As we showed you earlier today, down on that island, the, vol or the earthquakes are occurring in straight lines like a grid. It's not possible for it to be natural. It is a man-made thing, and they predicted it would happen. Watch. Ahora viene la parte interesante. Si 
permitirán calentar el agua y hacer que se evapore al instante. Si prestaste atención en clase de física, sabrás que la evaporación repentina del agua creará la presión necesaria para destruir la frágil ladera del volcán y hacer que se derrumbe contra el agua. ¿Imaginas qué ocurrirá después? ¡Exacto! ¡Un tsunami! Horas de 200 metros de altura cruzarán el Atlántico a la velocidad de un avión. El tsunami arrasará la costa este de los Estados Unidos. Nueva York desaparecerá en una inundación apocalíptica que se llevará consigo a los autoproclamados gobernantes del mundo que en estos momentos discuten con tienen incompetencia en la sede de la ONU. El vacío de poder resultante será rellenado por algunos de nuestros seguidores que llevan décadas esperando para ocupar estas posiciones clave. Ellos asumirán el control y conducirán a la humanidad hacia una nueva era dorada. Wow, man. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but when I watch that and then I actually watch the news today and see what they're doing, it really just kind of hits you like a ton of bricks. Oh, and then it's like your mind starts saying, wait a minute, it says that in the Bible. And oh, my goodness, this is happening. This is really happening. Now, look at this. This is Wikipedia. And it says here. Um, uh, it's made by Microsoft and it, the premise of the game is a vicar fleeing into his church is killed over documents prophesying the apocalypse. So the whole thing has got something to do with the apocalypse. And of course, um, the front picture on the game is a tsunami coming towards New York City. You see the Statue of Liberty there. It's right on the cover what this is about. And when you play the game, you see that it's actually from the, 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 the tsunami comes from a mountain falling into the sea that they do on purpose. And you know, by detonation, and it's on that island of Di La Palma. Friends, this is happening in real time. I don't think it's possible that this is a coincidence. Not after we just spent a year and a half going through what we just went through. And now they're talking about Ebola coming and a lot of bad things, World War Three, But of course... Jesus specifically mentioned the seismo or the, the shaking. And the book of Revelation says just before the Antichrist appears from the bottomless pit, there is a great mountain that falls into the sea. I had wondered what that could possibly mean. You know, people have speculated that it's going to be an asteroid. People are talking about that, what is it called, Apos, this is coming in the year 2029, and it's coming in the year 2036, and then I think in the year 20, what is it, 58 or something, I don't know, don't remember, but it's supposed to fly by real close to the Earth three different times, and people are saying, well, maybe it'll hit the Earth. But you see, I don't think we've got that long. I think by the year 2029, this whole thing's going to be over, because... Jerusalem or Israel became a nation in 1948 and this generation will not pass away. The book of Psalms tells us that a generation is 60 or 70 years, 80 if they're mighty. And it's already been 73 years. We've only got six and a half, seven years left and it has to all be fulfilled. And these individuals, you know, this Agenda 21, all the stuff that they're parading around, they've got to tell us everything they're doing. They're saying it's all going to be over by 2029 themselves. And there's a lot of stuff going around. We just talked about the Essenes that say that the Jubilee, the last Jubilee starts in 2025. That's about right in the middle of the tribulation. And that's what the Dead Sea Scroll says. The tribulation will begin around that point, just about the year 2025. That's when the Great Tribulation starts. And ends in 2029. Well, Look at this 
look at what the Bible says. Let's read what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 9. This, this is just crazy. Listen to this. So, let me read you Revelation chapter 8 and 9, parts of 8 and 9. Um, when he opened the seventh seal, verse, first verse, there were the seven angels that stand before divine being, and they were given seven trumpets. Verse 3, another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints. Oh boy, that's about right, right? There's sure a lot of people around the world at this point that are praying. And I imagine that it's reached the ears of our Father in heaven. And it says, It ascended before the divine being out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and cast it into the earth. And then there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. In verse 6, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. And the second angel sounded. And as it were a great mountain, burning with fire, have you seen the pictures, guys? The De La Palma Island has a mountain, a volcano. It's on fire. More so than any other mountain I've ever seen. I mean, we've talked, we've, we've had, you know, Mount St. Helens go off and other, other volcanoes. You know, there's one going off in Iceland and Hawaii and stuff. But this takes the cake and it's happening at the right moment when all these other things that the Bible seems to be foretelling Right? Literally happening like the, the, the white horse having the bow, which is toxic, right? Bio, uh, bio warfare and the plagues and all this stuff that sounds so very literal, like the pharmaceutical drugs that Babylon is deceiving the world with in Revelation 18, 23. And here we have a mountain. It's exactly what we've got on fire. And it says, a third part of the creatures, well, it, it, it was burning with fire and it was cast into the sea. That hasn't happened yet. But we do know from what the scientists have said when they've gone down and looked at it, they say it's about to go into the sea. And now it looks like they're actually helping it. They're detonating bombs down there in a grid pattern. I just don't see... You know, if, if, if we Christians who believe in the scriptures, and there are a lot of times where we'll take a verse, and I've seen it happen, and people say, well, I think it means this, and it doesn't even sound like, like it's something completely unrelated, and they think that's a fulfillment of that prophecy. But there is no clearer fulfillment. Like, I had no idea that Revelation would ever be fulfilled so literally. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, again, this may be Yahweh's attempt to fulfill the prophecies. But all I know is if Yahweh's trying to fulfill these prophecies and he drops a mountain into the sea and it causes a tsunami, well, that is more than likely there, there's not going to be another fulfillment before Jesus returns. That's it. That's what the Bible's talking about. We're here. Because what happens next it does not sound like it's going to be fun. Although we are at the brink of our salvation. Our deliverance is getting near. And so we can rejoice. Even though it's going to take a little bit of, you know, integrity to get through this. And we've got to make sure we have our faith. And we're very wise to get through this. But I know that if we believe and trust in the Lord, then if these things are happening exactly the way the Bible says, then we can trust and know when Jesus said, not one hair of your head shall be harmed. And those who endure unto the end will be delivered. 
and delivered from what? The Bible tells you the wrath to come. We will be delivered from the wrath to come. That's why Jesus tells the church in Revelation chapter 3, I will keep you from the hour of test. Friends, we're going to get through this. This is, we're going to make it. But we're going to make it because we see these things, we recognize them, and it gives us faith because we're paying attention. We have oil in our lamps and we're not going to be unaware when the thief comes. The Apostle Paul tells us that we are not uninformed, that he has given us information. We have knowledge and we're not going to be deceived or taken off our guard. We're going to be paying attention. We're going to have our lamps burning and we're going to be waiting patiently and we're going to be ready. That's all we got to do is follow the Lamb and love our neighbor because Jesus said if we give one cup of water to one of these little ones, we won't lose our reward. We will not lose our reward. However, if you begin to think, well, Jesus isn't coming and you go out and you start eating and drinking with the confirmed drunkards and the gluttons, which is the old covenant and the drinking and the eating with the old, you know, this meal is the old covenant. They're confirmed drunkards. In other words, Jesus came and gave us new wine, a new covenant. We don't want to go back again. That's the apostasy. And that's why all this is happening. The Apostle Paul tells us that, it, that the day of the Lord will not come until, until the apostasy comes first. And that's why the Bible tells us that love of the great, greater number will cool off. That's happened. The love of the many, most of the people in the world, no longer have love. So, the mountain falls into the sea and it says a third part of the sea became blood. I wonder what that means. Mm, well, it, I think it actually tells us the next verse. A third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. Well, there's your blood. When people die, you know, they lose their life force. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. So that's what it's talking about when it says the, that the sea became blood. In other words, there was a great number of people that died because of this. Now, the government is actually saying that if this happens, 64 million people may perish in, I think, just North America alone. But it continues. And in verse 10, it says, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. See, I think people mix up the mountain falling into the sea with the star that falls from heaven. Now, if the mountain that fell into the sea that was on fire is going to be fulfilled so literally, then this star that falls from heaven may also be very literal. It says it was burning as it were a lamp. I wonder why it says a lamp. Because you see, a lamp is something to illuminate your pathway. What star illuminates our pathway? Well, it would have to be the, uh, the light of the old law, like the light of Moses and not the light of Christ, who lighteth every man that comes into the world. But this is not the true lamp. And of course, our Father in Heaven and Jesus, they don't kill people. Well, this one fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. So it, evidently, right after this, if this happens and this mountain falls into the sea and we get this big tsunami, I mean, it may be weeks from now, but if this happens, then look for something to go flying out of the sky and landing on the ground where the springs of waters or the, the rivers flow. And it says the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. You know, I really do believe this is a very spiritual book. And that the bitter waters takes us back to the to the days when Moses was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. 
and they came to um, the the waters of Mara, and it says that the waters were bitter. And Moses threw down his staff and turned the waters so that it, it, from bitter to sweet, so they could drink the water. So it was a great miracle. I believe at this point, what this is saying is the saints are going to get some living waters while the rest of the world is going to be going through these terrible things. But we're being delivered from the plagues. It's all happening spiritual now. And it's Jesus, not Moses, that delivers us. And he gives us living waters. Meanwhile, the world is just falling apart. And verse 12, the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten. There will be no righteousness. The world will be turned upside down. There will not be good people running around helping one another, except for the saints who will be in the wilderness. And anyone who loves the Lord and is a decent, good person will be going out to the wilderness to be with the saints. And so, the sun spiritually means righteousness. There will not be any righteousness at this point. It will be a very, very rough time. And this seems like it may be coming very soon. But we may also find there could be something literal here, as we have seen with the mountain. We may see, see uh, very soon the sun being darkened so that it doesn't show any light and the moon being turned into blood. Now, what does that mean? Are somebody going to die on the moon? Or is like when it says the water's turned into blood? means the fish died? Somebody on the moon going to die? Well, remember, there's a war in heaven and the angels fight and, and the devil and his demons are thrown down. Well, who knows? I don't know if there's going to be a war on the moon, but I know that it means spiritually the law of Moses is um, going to be killing people, right? It'll be turned into blood to death. Uh, which is what the law always has been. It's an accusation. It's a curse. And it's a judgment. Because it's even called that in the Bible. His laws and his judgments. So, it says the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it. And the night likewise. And I behold and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying, with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Woe. <laughs> and verse 1 of chapter 9, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Is this the same star? And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Well, see, this is the introduction of the three and a half years because Antichrist arises out of the bottomless pit. In other words, he's already been on the earth and he dies. Now, if someone, mm, who do you think maybe could be the Antichrist then? Well, it's got to be somebody well known that the world will love, that everyone would love so that most people would get down and worship him. And I don't know who that could be. We've talked about Trump. Well, it was Trump who started Warp Speed, which is in line with the prophecy because the Antichrist comes with a toxic bow to put, you know, you could say, well, somebody in China then. Maybe, it, maybe it's the Ing Ching Wing Wing Ching guy over in China. Uh, I don't know his name. Xing, or whatever his name is. Uh, Xing Chi. I can't say that name. But maybe he's the... But I don't think he could be, even though, you know... I mean, even, even as a villain, there's not too many people afraid of him. Um, I haven't been too many people talking about Putin, and I don't think Putin would do this kind of thing. Um, Obama, he was well-loved when he was here, and lots of people hated him. But I don't... You know, I don't know. All I do know is if you look uh, at the statue of Akhenaten, who's the one who created this monotheism of worshipping Adonai, it looks identical to Obama. 
Just saying. So, I don't know who the Antichrist will be, and I don't think anybody knows, but there are some possibilities. Um, so, whoever it is, though, it appears as though they die. Remember, Jesus died and rose again. And it says of Jesus, he was, and he is, and he is coming. Which, you know, in Greek means, it, it, it says parousia, he is present. Well, it's not translated that way. It's, it's always translated, he was and he is and is coming. But it really should be translated, he was and he is, and he is present. Now, the Antichrist, it says of him, he was, but he is not. And yet he shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Therefore, whoever it is ascending out of the bottomless pit has already lived. And it says he receives a wound in his head by a sword. That could mean just a, a battle wound, or it may mean a literal sword. And it, seem, it seems like things are becoming very literal. By the way, uh, the Bible says that those who don't partake of the mark of the beast, who refuse it, it tells you in the Bible they're beheaded. Uh, isn't it interesting that under the law that was put in place by the United Nations, that's going to be put into effect very soon under the um, the Nasera law and the Nasera laws they the, the, the method for people who do not keep that law is beheading and it seems as though they have purchased a great number of guillotines and they plan on using them now this is starting to become very, very, very literal because it tells us we'll be beheaded by guillotine if you don't get the mark of the beast. I'm just saying, folks, this is very, very clear. What now we're here. We can actually read the book of Revelation almost in real time. And it's like happening right now all around us. And so as soon as the Antichrist arises, you know, like comes back from the dead. Now, again, that might, you know, it, there, we don't really know how that's going to happen. Jesus was literally raised from the dead. Will Yahweh be, you know, or the Antichrist or whatever, the Yahweh's Antichrist, will he die and be raised up or will he die and, you know, because it, it says something about they make an image under the beast and they give breath to the image, that it might speak, cause it to live. Now, it sounds like it's possible that whoever the Antichrist is, he lives inside of some, some creation, or I mean, like maybe a computer, maybe it's AI. We don't know, but this is very, very frightening to see this and read this. But it says that after the Antichrist is raised from the dead, as, as I take it, um, a smoke arises out of the pit as of a great furnace. And verse 3, uh, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And, a, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. You see, I never dream that that could be literal as well. I had thought of different things like, well, maybe it's like little armies or, you know, because there are scriptures and Joel talks about these locusts as though they're armies. So in one fulfillment in, in the past, there were armies of human armies that were represented by these locust armies that went in and just wiped out nations. But in this case, I wonder if it's not actually a locust or some kind of a locust-like creature. It, it, it's a very strange creature because it has scorpion tails. So it's, a, it's like a little parasite-looking thing. Could that be the armies of the Antichrist, the devil? Like little creatures, little armies that go forth and give people this disease? Because it says in Revelation chapter 16 too, that when the first bowl of wrath is poured out, a malignant 
sore or a malignant ulcer is upon all those who partake of the mark of the beast. Why would you have sores all over your body? And why would it be called a plague? I think it comes from that toxic bow that the Antichrist has. This biological warfare that he begins. And it says, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, if this, if these scorpion-looking locust parasitic creatures, these armies, if those are what we are thinking they are, little parasitic creatures that we are now witnessing in the world, that people are, you know, becoming ill, then the fact that it says don't let them hurt any of the grass or the any green thing until we have sealed the men in their foreheads tells me that the 144,000 are sealed in the forehead to be protected because they because you see Locust takes out green things, right? They chew up all the grass and the vegetation. But these aren't just locusts. They have stings in their tails. They're little parasites that kill. And of course, this is somewhat symbolic. So when these things take off, they're not going to hurt the 144,000. Don't let them hurt any green thing until we have sealed all the servants. So that means that the 144,000 are on the earth at this time. And they've been sealed in their forehead. They're all here. Are you one of them? Are you? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you love the Lord? Well, read the book of John, 1 John, and it'll tell you that the way you can know is whether you have love. If you have love, then you're, you're born of God and you're going to be saved. You're in Christ because you believe in his grace and, and you received his grace. And you're following after him. And it says that you know if you have love when you see somebody hungry and you feed them or somebody homeless or somebody naked and you clothe them. That's how you know that you have love. When you give a cup of water to one of these little ones, you will not lose your reward. That's all you got to do. So it seems to me that this is now confirmed up to this point. We'll stop here. We won't go any further in the book of Revelation tonight. But it seems to me that if we're now closing in on that moment when the mountain falls into the sea, if that is what that means, we'll find out in due time, very very soon, then we can expect everything else to happen very shortly. And that means that all you guys out there at this point, have to remember that you have to do everything in your power to make sure that you cry out to the Lord and that you pray and ask the Lord to help you to get your affairs in order and make sure that you have your priorities set this is life and death. We need to start telling our families. We need to start planning and preparing. We've got to make sure that we have faith and faith comes by hearing. So that means you better start reading the scripture and praying and asking for the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth so that that Oil can be in you, that you can be a lamp and shine and be enlightened and know the truth and recognize the true Christ because the true Christ is love. Because there will be a lot of people that will be deceived and they'll be saying, oh, there's so much wickedness in the world. We got to have law and order. And they'll say, make more prisons and kill more people and have more armies. 
and send out the police and round them up. They're all bad. They're not wearing their M-A-S-K. Don't be deceived, friends. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.